more donuts. Schedule. Bring the donuts. Good morning. I'd like to call the regular scheduled meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. <coughs> Excuse me, it's May 15th, 2017. It is now 8.32. First order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to ask Selectman McKellen to lead us, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Gary? Okay. Uh, this morning, we're going to depart from our uh, regular business, and we have uh, two presentations to make. First of all, we have uh, Representative Scanlon to uh, make one from the state. Sean, why don't you come up here, please? Well, good, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm here today uh, for a somber note, but um, to celebrate Bud, um, who uh, I didn't know that well, but I knew so much about. Um, and obviously, Mrs. Benson, as I will always call you, <laughs> as a former teacher, uh, I still can't call you by your, your first name. Um, I wanted to just come here and offer my condolences and present you with something from the state um, on behalf of, um, you know, Bud and all, and all he accomplished. And I'll just say this, as a boy who grew up in Guilford, born and raised here, um, the path that I now am on uh, in terms of public service um, was paved by people like your husband who did so much for our town, did so much to make it what it is today um, and what it will always be. And uh, I'm just here to say thank you. Uh, in his memory and to present you with this uh, in his honor on behalf of the state. So thank you, thank you so much. Before I, I fall apart, maybe, my family and I would like to thank you for honoring Bud today. He always enjoyed the work he was able to do for the town of Guilford and the friendships he made with the people he worked with. On a lighter note, <laughs> and I'm looking at Joe, uh -oh. <laughs> his only problem was he was from Rhode Island, a Red Sox and Patriots fan. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> that's not a problem. That's not a problem at all. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm older than Sean, so I'm going to call Mrs. Benson very low. <laughs> I was very friendly with, with Bud. And, uh, and I wasn't your teacher. No, you were. <laughs> You're too young to be my teacher. I, I don't know if any of my teachers are alive. I doubt it. They might be about 110 by now. But uh, Mary Lou, um, the Board of Selectmen would like to stay there, please would like to present uh, to you, uh, in memory of Bud, in celebration of Bud's life, a proclamation uh, from the board here. Uh, on a personal note, uh, Bud was a very good friend of mine, and he was uh, kind of a mentor to me, personally. Um, when I first got started in uh, politics, I hate to use the word politics. It's oh, sir. Oh, well, thank you, because it's gotten such a bad name lately. Um, and this goes back. 1993, <clears throat> excuse me, when I first ran for the Board of uh, Finance, um, I call up Bud, and I remember one Sunday afternoon was getting very close to Election Day, and I called up Bud, and I said, uh, Bud, I'm thinking of going out and campaigning and standing in front of, uh, I think it was, uh, before it was Big Y, it was First National. He said, stay home. He says, people have seen enough of you. <laughs> <laughs> right, Sean? You know what that's like, huh? He said, that they've made up their mind. Stay home, watch the football game. And I did. And I took his advice. And, well, to some people, maybe I shouldn't have taken his advice. But that is where I am. But uh, it, it was that, that kind of relationship. 
And the only thing that we didn't have in common was, as Mary Lou has said, our baseball teams. Bud was an avid uh, baseball fan, unfortunately. He was a Red Sox fan, Gary Closer is. And I'm still a Yankee fan, except this weekend I don't want to admit too much to it. But anyway, uh, I've said enough. Uh, Mary Lou, please accept this proclamation on behalf of the Board of Selectmen for Bud's service to both the town, the community, and his church. And we uh, will always remember Bud, and he's greatly missed. Thank you very much. Well, he, 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 he really enjoyed serving the town of Guilford. Um, and he, um, he I, I didn't even realize because I never was that involved with any of this part of his career as I was staying home and taking care of four children and teaching. <laughs> The next generation. Of yes. <laughs> and I take credit for all the good things that he's As doing. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. He probably has different ideas. No. <laughs> <laughs> but this is wonderful. And I'm, I have to say, in, in the time that I know that he spent doing all this, he enjoyed all of it. And um, he enjoyed the people that he met and had a great respect for them. And so thank you very, very much from myself and my four children, one in Georgia, one in California, one in New Jersey, and one in New York City. And that's the reason I'm the only one here. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for, from, for them, from them too. They are very, very proud of their father, who was a wonderful father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, thanks to all of you. And, and you too, Carl. <laughs> I think, I think he was my principal for a while at one time. <laughs> Okay, uh, next order of business is a public forum, limited to three minutes on any agenda item. Anybody wishing to address the board? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes. We have uh, one set of minutes, which was May 8th, uh, 2017, which was a special meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any additions or corrections? Okay. None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes approved as presented. Okay. Item five, financial director, Mary Jane. Good morning, Mary Jane. Good morning. And we'll have the financial reports for <coughs> May. Excuse me, April. For April. I'm kind of rushing things a little bit here. <laughs> Yeah. End of the fiscal year is approaching quickly, though. <laughs> as you can. I'll start with revenues. Oh, wait, you're all set. No. Okay. Uh, as of the end of April, we are 83% through the year already. Um, last year at this time, we were at 99.9% .9 collected, and um, as of the end of April, we, we hit our 100 mark. Uh, these figures uh, do include, however, the excess cost grant, which will be transferred to the Board of Education in May. Um, so the ending balance in the ECS grant will ref reflect the loss of the 171000 Right now, if you look at the Board of Education, it does show um, that uh, you know, we have received more than, our <laughs> than we were budgeted for, but that's because we received the excess cost grant, which the Board of Finance um, has instructed us to transfer back to the Board of Ed. So that line will reflect the uh, a deficit of 171000 um, once that is done, just as we reported uh, through the state cuts this year. Uh, there is a new proposed cut. It, excuse me, Mary Jane, on mm -hmm. that. Um, it, it will reflect the 171, but mm -hmm. also we have to transfer out the two 83? Correct. After we do that. Okay. At, w once that excess cost grant transfer is made, mm -hmm. it'll be, it, it, 
it'll be short, the 171. Okay. But the 283 is in here Correct. now? Correct. Okay. Yes, it's in here now. Yep. Um, it's the excess cost grant. From prior years that the Board of Correct. Education uh, did receive from the state and has requested from, uh, uh, from the first selectman that it be transferred to their account uh, and I told them to request it from the Board of Finance because that's their purview, not ours. Okay. Right. Which and they and which they have granted. And that. I did not object to it. Okay. They have granted that. Okay. So they said it, it does show we received more than we budgeted for, but um, at the end of the day, it will not. Okay. So then, the bottom line, the actual receipt, the date when we look at May, will be two eighty three less. Plus, we'll receive for May. Correct. Okay. We've, re we've received all of our ECS payments at this right. point. But in so total. Correct. Okay. The, the, bottom, the bottom line will show the re this reduction in state revenue of 171 right. um, the next time we look at these reports. Is everybody clear on that? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to sell you a used car. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to buy it. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say that there is a new proposed state cut for this current year, which is our final payment for the casino grants. Um, it, it would result in a loss of about $8,700 to us. Um, although it is a, a loss of our revenue, it is one that we can absorb through um, other revenues that we've received um, from other state grants and um, <coughs> town funds. Uh, so. Um, we are still expecting one more state grant in for uh, municipal projects, and at the end of the day, I'm hoping at the end of the year that we should show about $65,000 in additional re state revenue, um, more than we had budgeted because of some additional um, grants that we received throughout the year. Uh, so uh, other than that, um, our revenues are looking very well on the local level. Um, and that there, there are some positive projections on some of the local revenue lines which are helping us to balance overall to bring us to that 100%. Okay. Any Thank questions you. on revenue? Thank you. Um, on the expenditure side, uh, we are 80% expended as of right now. Last year we were at 73.5%. Um, I want you to note that the overages that you see in debt and revaluation will be made whole at the end of the year through transfers that we have in reserve funds. Um, there is a reserve um, for uh, the revaluation um, that we will transfer from to make that whole, and also the, the net of the principal and interest in debt will be transferred from funds that we have set aside through our refunding of, of our debt obligations. So those will be whole at the end of the year, even though you're showing overages right now. Um, otherwise, unless you have any questions, <coughs> kind of reviewed um, everything over the months, not much else has changed. We still have some large encumbrances on the books. We are looking uh, to, s to be sure that those are, are closed out and, uh, and uh, finalized by the end of the year. Uh, whether we use the funds or revert them back um, to the expenditure lines. Okay. Um, I had Mary Jane <coughs> a couple of weeks ago do a, a projection of uh, where we would be at the end of the fiscal year and uh, you mind if I say this? That uh, yeah, we're, I think we reported at the last. Meeting. Yeah, we will. We look like we'll, we'll be okay. Right, yeah. and doing a review of that again, working with the departments, like I said, that have the encumbrances, because um, that um, could make a difference. In, but at, at this point, we are still looking that we will have a positive um, fund balance at the at the end of the year. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Uh, we want to go to. Insurance. Uh, so, so this reports to the end of April. Um, again, we had a, a good month, um, a little less than our monthly budget uh, on track for, 
for that. We are still having a, a very good year um, for our, uh, expenses <coughs> in the health benefit line item, um, which uh, is really reflective of the catastrophic claims because those are being uh, accounted for um, through through our ISL uh, on the other side. So what you're seeing is a reduction in our regular claims, but um, we unfortunately have um, quite a few. And the catastrophic side, you'll see that we've saved about 700000 um, on that because of that insurance. Uh, revenue is tracking right where we uh, should be. And at the, uh, we project at the end of June, uh, we have about a $2.7 million fund balance um, in, this, in this fund. Okay, now something I, I, I thought about, um, and I'll address to this board, it might come up with the Board of Finance. If we're projecting, um, according to the April report, a $2.7 million, okay, and if we uh, are getting very close in our uh, operating, okay, uh, do we need to make the last payment into this account in June? Since we have such a surplus, I think it's something we should discuss with the Board of Finance. Okay, yeah, okay. answer that right now. <laughs> no, I don't want to answer that. I, but I, I, I think, think about it. Right, I also know um, that they're also considering this fund as a way to help next year's budget. Uh, that I know, I'm, should, very, I'm well aware of that. Should the, should the state yeah. um, hit us harder than we are anticipating? Right. And we have no idea. We have no idea. So I was, I was up with the state, uh, I forgot what day it was, Wednesday or Thursday, I can't remember, Thursday, and um, met with several of the state leaders, uh, legislative leaders. <sighs> Guys, they don't know where they are. They have no idea where they're going to be. Um, teachers' pension is still up in the air, even though they say that they're not going to hit the towns with it, but we don't know until they mm -hmm. finally vote. Or, uh, or negotiate with the governor on his budget. So, right. You okay. just have to take that into account too, and, making that decision. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I do agree that we said that this would be one of the areas that we would fund next year's budget because mm -hmm. we made a pledge not to go back to the uh, taxpayers with any supplemental tax bills. And by the way, I think we're one of the few towns that are not going to send out supplemental bills. Oh, a lot. A lot of towns are going to send out supplemental bills, and these are the towns that have already passed their budgets. So I think uh, yeah, Guilford is, a, you know, is a, it's pretty good in that regard. That we okay, okay. Share, at least. <laughs> no? okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you, Mary Jane. Okay, come on. Um, item six. Board of Education, Director of Operation, Cliff Gurdon, right there, okay. We've got a uh, couple of items for Cliff. 6.1, discuss to take possible action to accept the educational specific specifications for the roof replacement at the Melissa Jones Elementary School. Okay, Cliff? Correct. Um, Um, the ed spec was approved by the Board of Ed at their last meeting, was reviewed and approved. Uh, so essentially at this meeting here, um, we're looking to move forward with really the three resolutions. Um, I don't know if you guys necessarily need to approve the educational specs as much as the, uh, three, the following three resolutions um, <clears throat> that follow. Uh, in 6263 and actually 61 probably just needs to be revised um, to approve uh, or create a building committee or appoint the standing building committee to the project uh, for the Melissa Jones roof project. I don't believe this board has uh, has to approve the uh, Ed Specs, right? Right, right. So I, I think that just needs to be uh, revised that uh, you'll appoint or uh, designate the Standing Building Committee uh, as the building committee for the Melissa Jones Roof Project okay. as your first uh, resolution. Okay. Is motion? Yeah. Yes. Right. Oh. Is there a second? Second. 
Yeah, I, I don't think there's any need to appoint another committee. I think the building, no. standing building committee does. They, they've been right. involved up to this yeah. point anyway, so yeah. Okay. Uh, motion is made and seconded. Is there any discussion on that? Well, question, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, and we got 6.3. I'm oh, sorry, Kent. Is this going to be the final, uh, the way it's worded? Because. Yeah, no, this was just a copy from okay. the right. uh, prior minutes to give us some okay. uh, direction on how to word the uh, resolution. Okay. Um, 6.3, discuss and take possible action to authorize the filing, and it should be, that's wrong, should be an SCG 049 grant application for the Melissa Jones Elementary School roof replacement project. You want to just. Did you just jump to 6.3? Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, six. Go, can we go back up to six point two? Yeah. I think we missed that one. So six point two is uh, having the uh, board uh, resolve the um, uh, to allow us per, to prepare the schematic drawings and uh, specifications for the Melissa Jones roof project. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So moved. There a second. second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. And then the 6.3 is to have the um, Board of Selectmen approve the filing of the SCG 049 uh, grant application with the state for the Melissa Jones Elementary roof so we can obtain reimbursement and the grant. So Second. Any discussion? Uh, my only discussion is, is, is Anything we do going forward consistent with some of the work that's been done as part of the uh, um, this uh, cost savings, the EPC project? So uh, we are working um, with Johnson Controls. With Johnson Controls has been working on the uh, energy performance contract. Uh, they are well aware that we are in the process of uh, replacing the roof at Melissa Jones. So uh, part of the energy performance contract is potentially putting solar onto Melissa Jones. That will not happen, obviously, until after the roof uh, is installed. And we will work with Johnson Controls to ensure that uh, the roof we put on uh, best matches the solar system that we're putting on there. So we'll work and engineer everything together as one as we move forward. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Good. Trace, did you get that that was SCG 049, not ED 049? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, item 7, town engineer. Which importantly, discuss and take possible action to reaffirm the Board of Selectmen support of the proposed Nut Plains pathway with revised cost estimates. Good morning, Tim. Good morning. So we have uh, heard back from uh, State and from COG that they've approved the project. So Guilford and, and Hamden are the other two uh, towns that have approved projects. Um, in their analysis done by uh, the State's consultant, uh, VHB, they increased the estimated cost of the path what they didn't take into account is that when, when I submitted it, we, we had anticipated taking absorbing some of the costs in the uh, in the construction of the our lots of program that we were going to rebuild um, nut planes uh, with lots of money, and in, in doing that we were going to widen the road out and widen the sh widen shoulders. But uh, so I, I think it's what they've done is given us more money than we may need, but that's okay because. The lots of program was cut back, <laughs> so we, we're only going to get nut planes from North Madison Road to Goose Lane. The section between Goose Lane and up to State Street which does not meet the criteria for uh, the lots of program. It has to be a, a, be a, a road that's rated as a thoroughfare, and there's a higher uh, higher level of uh, criteria there. So all in all. All in all, it, it should be worked out as the project proceed. Um, so, I think at this point, rather than and, uh, so that we can get go forward with this, I would recommend the board of selectmen uh, authorize the uh, additional funding uh, that we I believe we could take from the uh, the uh, bond issue we have for inland roads. It is an improvement. 
we, we have uh, we had one hundred forty thousand dollars in that first bond issue that we were earmarking for the basically it was a, the sidewalk from uh, Adams School up to uh, uh, Red Plains Road East. So that one hundred forty thousand was what we already had uh, set aside for that. The additional one hundred fifty thousand dollars uh, we would need to meet, have matching funds for this program. Uh, would be available through that bond issue since it was a, a road bond, a road issue uh, bond. So uh, I would recommend the Board of Selectmen reaffirm their support of this application, and, and that's all that we need to do at this point in time. That, that we would provide the funding. The funding, I think, the dollars will work out as we as we get pro through with the project. And I, I just I just wouldn't want to lose the opportunity for this uh, for this project to be uh, to not go forward. Um, yeah, since we're one, or I should say two, in the Count Hamden of the 15 towns that have been approved, it would be a shame to lose the money. Um, but the question I have, Jim, is what happens to the 140 that was approved for that uh, pathway? It, well, it just, it would what do you mean what happens to it? It's going to be part of what our, fund, our funding of the 20% we have. We have to have 20% matching funds in this program. Yes. Yeah. So it would, we would have to, 140 wouldn't satisfy that. We need another, I think it was, we need about $290,000. So we're us. not abandoning that. No, no. no. Okay. No, the, that, that, that's what we make sure they, that people understand that. Okay. No, the pathway right from out of school all the way up to the, the uh, Guilford Lake School is identified as, and approved as part of this project. Okay. 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 Given all the issues and controversies we've had over sidewalks, greenways, pathways, um, does anybody along this pathway, has anybody, have any of the residents focused that this is part of the plan? Um, I'd certainly like to see some sort of public input as to where that so they can see where this is going and what this means to them because I'd hate to do all of this and then find out all the residents aren't all that happy with it um. <laughs> not unreasonable <laughs> you know I just but we have we have been we have but that's you know that's the point we have to go forward to get that answer yeah I, I understand it's a little bit of a chicken and egg until it's fully designed they don't know what it is but it, um, I mean, the last time we had, a, we had it fully designed, it wasn't very acceptable to a bunch of people. So I, I think it'd be worth right. But that input. was a group that wasn't even you know in the neighborhood involved, and they had separate issues that they were using that to count to, to foster their issue. Maybe. Well, well, I don't know yeah. what the issues are here. I, I don't well, know. If that's I don't true. know. If there we don't know. If that's true. I don't even know if there are any issues. That's why it, I, I think it would be worthwhile to surface it and get some input. I, it, well, it's, first of all, this is not a greenway trail. <laughs> okay, yeah. let's let's understand so, that, and and I want to get that out there. This is uh, a pathway uh, that has been um, asked for by a number of residents the last couple <coughs> of years, uh, both from the people who live uh, in the Oxbow area um, and the State Street area and along the North Madison um, and Nut Plains Road area. Coventry. Okay. And, excuse me, Coventry also. So um, I think the first step would be to at least secure the financing. And then uh, we have to, we certainly have to present the plan to the folks. Absolutely. But to I Gary's think point. Gary's point's well taken, I agree. <laughs> but I think that we have to secure the financing and tell COD uh, council of governments and the DOT that we uh, want the money, we don't want to lose it, uh, and just get our place in line or secure our place in line. And then, of course, we got to go through all of the steps and get public input. I mean, in any project, we have to get public <coughs> input. Um, you okay back there? And, and make sure that. Uh, I, 
the public is well aware, I don't want to go through the issue we had with the Greenway trains. Definitely don't want to go through that. Well, I, you know, this was asked for by the people in the neighborhood of the, of the pathway. Uh, a lot of parents and yep. whatnot of the kids. So to secure the funding for it, and then come to up to develop the plan and yeah. then present the plan. I mean, that's the process. I mean, it and does if another group from another part of town does what they did last time, so be it. Well, so we also had a group, a large group in here arguing. I, I, th this is a small G greenway, right. correct? Right. I mean, pathway, pathway is not a legal term. It's either a sidewalk or a small G greenway. And that's as correct. I remember that's Jim's correct. application, this is a small G greenway. And I just think people ought to understand what it is. There are a whole bunch of people on State Street that objected to a sidewalk. Correct. You know, maybe they're more comfortable with a greenway or maybe they, they need. But um, And as I somewhat facetiously said to Jim when he said a, a bunch of people from Nut Plains have requested it, I said, people don't call and say, please don't put a sidewalk until they know it's an issue. So I mean, you know. Nobody call. There are people that call for it, but nobody calls against it until it's been surfaced. So, I don't. That's true. I don't know if there's any objection, but I just I, I think we ought to start getting some information out there. Um, and I also would hope that a lot of our contribution is soft cost. It's your time. It's Mark's right, time. Right. And you know, if it, if it's not going to go anywhere, uh, I guess we could blow a lot of engineering department time. If, if it's a problem, that, that as we have done. I think that's a good point. And I, and I go, I think there's three thoughts I have on this. One, no matter any change is going to have opposition. I don't care. You can change. Years ago, we put stripes down the center of the road. I had a lot of people call and said, you're turning this into a city. <laughs> And yet now, when we don't have them, people scream. Oh, but the stripes. Yeah. Saying, where's the stripes? So that, that, I think change. <laughs> yeah, amazing. yeah, change is is is, a, is an issue. Number two, you're right, Gary. This is yeah. a soft cost. Yeah. If we don't get this funding, well, we don't have any loss because we didn't do it. We don't do anything. Okay, we'll do something else. But if we absorb this, at least get the preliminary plans where we get the the, the folks can look at something, then we can have a reasonable hearing and, and everybody can. Well, see what you know, and to your point of plans, I mean, that was one of the big complaints last time, the plan, the plan. Well, you know, let's have a plan before we present <laughs> something and, and send out a bunch of red flags when we don't know what the proposal is right. going to be. So uh, the issue before us, and I agree with everything that's said, but the issue before us is to uh, notify council governments through my office that we're in, in agreement with going forward and to secure the financing. Right. You want that in the form of a motion? Yes. I, mean, I need it. I can't write it myself. I, 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 I move it. whatever you just said. Oh. <laughs> Is there a second? Oh, second? Okay. Is there any further discussion? I, I would only make one additional comment. I, sure. Going back to yours. Um, some of the folks, and, and we may want to include the the large G Greenway Trail folks. Um, some of the folks on the on the large G Greenway Trail group are talking about uh, basically supporting pathways where appropriate in town and dropping their uh, dropping their idea of a continuous pathway. They're just concerned about you know safety and access and so on and. And you know, <coughs> under that philosophy, I think you know they could well be a very valuable uh, contributor to the town. Well, they'll have their opportunity for public discussion once the plan is presented, mm -hmm. just like uh, all the residents that asked for this. So, sure, I mean we'll accept their input as well as all the parents in the area that wanted this. And, and understand, this is all consistent with our transportation plan. Mm -hmm. 2002 provide these paths to go places so we're, we're being consistent okay um, anything further for a call for vote all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. unanimous thank you thank you Jim. um would you give me a call and get back to your office sure i should be done sure <clears throat> uh number eight consider and take possible action to set a public hearing 
for June 19, 2017, 8.30 a.m. at the Guilford Town Hall to consider and take, uh, oh, excuse me, to consider programs that shall be included in the 2017 State of Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act program. This is where we have all of uh, all the uh, nonprofits or the ones that want to come in and uh, be considered for the uh, Neighborhood Assistance Program. And if they're uh, uh, approved, then anyone, any corporation who uh, uh, donates to them can take in credit on their uh, Connecticut state tax return. Okay. I'll so, make that motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> okay, we have a proclamation to uh, take action on, discuss and take a possible action on a proclamation for the Guilford Keeping Society 70th anniversary. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, correspondence. I have, we have the monthly reports from Public Works and the building official in your packet. Any comments? Right. <coughs> uh, 11, request for the use of town property. We have 11-1 through 11-3. I would move that we approve the two signs and the one use requests as listed on 11-1 through 11-3. Second. Second. Okay. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I have no appointments and resignations, uh, no old business. Um, New business is Memorial Day Parade is uh, Monday, is the 29th, Carl? I believe so. Okay, it's 10 o'clock at the Alderbrook Cemetery. We'll have a, <coughs> a brief ceremony, and then the parade will uh, commence after the ceremony and go up Boston Street and terminate at the Town Green, where we'll have a, uh, another ceremony there. Okay. Right. So it will start at, at uh, the cemetery, at, at the Alderbrook Cemetery, mm -hmm. like we have done for the last yeah. uh, few years now. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, any other new business? Trace, that is that the 29th, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yes. I'm okay. correct on the date. All right. Public forum limited to uh, three minutes on any item. I don't see anybody wishing to address, and I call for adjournment. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Bye. All right. Thank you, everybody. There's a high degree of likelihood I will not be. Spikes, now let's go find a quieter area or something like that. So there's I, that. I tend to agree with you, Kevin, that if you have more activity that is allowed on our trail, you're going to have less activity. That's an allowed for the ATVs. Right. And I think that, too, that, I mean, it's worked out with the horses. We put up signs where we don't want the horses to go on the um, um, narrower trails and more rougher trails and stuff like that. And I think, like you said, if we do the same thing with the bicycles, mm -hmm. um, the pikers can have an area and the bikers can have a separate area there and um, it makes it a safer environment. And we can't, my, my land stewards can't be up there all the time saying you can't be on this trail with a bike, so it's a lot easier providing them with a path which we know is safe for them than them going on trails which we don't want them to be on. And I think the respect the signs and the trails which we find are... So do we have to actually take action? I mean, yeah. isn't this enough that the committee...